Okay. Um, first, I just want to begin by saying thank you to Professor Flood. I think that your paper works really good as a background to my paper. And I think I'm also dealing with the question if God is conscious and maybe the implications of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, so in this paper, I concentrate on the Pratyavichna doctrine of the freedom of consciousness, so Svatantriya Vada, focusing on the perspectives of Upanadeva and Abhinavagupta. Central to this inquiry is the relationship between absolute consciousness, Shiva, the ultimate reality or absolute subject, and its finite expressions in the world, encompassing what we commonly refer to as matter and individual subjects. Pratyavichna grapples with the profound challenge of reconciling the world's multiplicity and materiality with the concept of singular all-encompassing consciousness, a challenge shared by various um, monist philosophies in Western and Indian traditions. By critically engaging with rival systems such as Advaita Vedanta and Vidyanavada, or the Buddhist idealist school, also known as the Yogacara, Pratyavitna thinkers are committed to furnishing a comprehensive account of how finite expressions originate from the absolute. A recurrent issue in the Pratyavitna revolves around how the one absolute subject or Shiva fragments it itself into finite objects and subjects. To address this, Pratyavitna philosophers invoke the concept of spanda, which refers to the vibration or the pulsation of consciousness, representing consciousness inherent and dynamism and free creativity. While affirming the unobstructed freedom of consciousness to assume, oh, I haven't even, <laughs> sorry. Um, while affirming the unobstructed freedom of consciousness to assume any form at will, uh, they maintain that Shiva, when manifesting as the universe, remains unaffected by this process. However, um, as I will argue in this paper, this assertion poses a fundamental challenge, reconciling the absolute freedom intrinsic to consciousness with its purportedly immutable nature. So I guess here we're coming back to this kind of paradoxical uh, nature of God. Pratyavichna philosophers argue that while consciousness is dynamic and creative, and um, Shiva remains um, unaltered by his manifestations and undergoes no change in essence in manifesting as the universe, presenting an apparent paradox regarding the nature of the absolutes. This paradox raises fundamental questions about consciousness, the material world, agency, freedom, and transcendence. How does, so one of the questions I have is, how does consciousness in its absolute freedom interact with its finite expressions? And the second question is, how can we reconcile the dynamic and creative process of manifestation with consciousness purportedly unaffected nature? So this paper addresses these questions by examining Uttaladeva's and Abhinavagupta's insights, exploring their approaches to these tensions and their implications for understanding the relationship between finite expressions and absolute consciousness. It argues that a central divergence emerges between Abhinavagupta and his predecessor Uttaladeva, as Abhinavagupta seeks to attribute greater autonomy and freedom to finite expressions. <laughs> to comprehend the potential tension between Shiva and its finite manifestations, it is essential to consider Kajavichna's understanding of consciousness and its relationship with what we might term as matter. Pratyavichna, while lacking a direct conceptual equivalence to the way Western notion of matter, navigates this terrain primarily through the lens of subject-object relationships, <laughs> elucidated via terms such as vimarsha, which is um, refers to the reflective awareness or active awareness um, or consciousness, and shakti, which um, means Shiva's power or energy. This active awareness representing consciousness inherent impulse to reflect upon itself it propels Shiva's pursuit of self-expression and self-comprehension through the manifestation of the universe. This innate drive for self-knowledge impels absolute consciousness into dynamic interaction with itself, culminating in the contraction of consciousness into the entirety of the universe, encompassing all objects and fragmented subjects. 
central to the philosophical framework of Patapichnam and this is the distinctive perspective on consciousness, emphasizing its dual nature as both light, so prakasha, and active or reflected awareness, imarsha, while other Indian philosophical schools primarily conceive of consciousness as mere illumination or light, signifying its role in revealing and manifesting all things, Kajabichna emphasizes its dynamic and active nature through the concept of Vimarsha. Vimarsha, or active awareness, endows consciousness with self-reflexive capacity, enabling it to assume diverse forms that constitute the world. As with Baladeva contents, without active awareness, conscious would resemble an inert object like a crystal, passively reflecting itself without being aware of its reflections. Pachevichna serves as Shiva or absolute consciousness, possesses Vimarsha alongside Prakasha or light, allowing for active self reflection of the absolute. This dynamic essence of consciousness, synonymous with the absolute freedom of consciousness, or Svatantriya Vada, which refers to the doctrine of free will, forms the corners, cornerstone of Pajavitna's philosophical tenets. According to this doctrine, consciousness' intris intrinsic nature is one of free creativity, delighting in its own creative expression. Prasyavichna posits consciousness freedom as the very foundation of existence, uh, depicting it as a pure dynamism capable of creating and assuming any form driven by its innate desire for self-expression. Furthermore, <laughs> the Buddhist emphasis of, of, on consciousness freedom, Shiva's chief characteristic, characteristic of unobstructed freedom and unbounded will, and that Prasavichna illustrates how absolute consciousness manifests as the object in the world and fragments itself into multiple conscious subjects. So according to Prasavichna, the concept of matter is not fundamentally distinct from consciousness, but intimately connected with it. Prasavichna affirms that the reality of the world, viewing it as a reflection or as an avatar of consciousness itself, a genuine creation rather than an illusion as suggested in Advaita Vedanta. Prasavichna emphasizes the freedom of consciousness to manifest in various forms, which is intimately linked to the self-reflected capacity of consciousness. To clarify, consciousness is imbued with, a, with power of shakti to manifest in diverse forms, highlighting the inherent interdependence of matter and consciousness. This dynamic and creative power intrinsic to consciousness, representing its capacity to act, enables it to manifest in the world as matter. Thus, by portraying consciousness as endowed with active awareness, Vajravichna um, challenges tra traditional conceptions of consciousness in both Indian and Western philosophy, which often depicted as uh, static or uh, devoid of agency. This perspective provides valuable insights into the dynamic relations between absolute consciousness and map, um, sorry, between consciousness and matter, illuminating the process by which consciousness manifests as a material world. Next, let us investigate the manifestation process according to Kachavichna, exploring the transition of absolute consciousness from subjectivity to objectivity. Central to this exploration is the concept of spanda, so again, the pulsation or vibration of consciousness, representing the creative throb and or vibration of consciousness that serves as a bridge between pure consciousness and the material world. The concept of spanda, as expounded by Utpala and Binavizutta, is beyond the limitations of time and space, yet is the ground of all things. This subtle movement within consciousness acts as the foundational impulse for the uni universe emergence, manifesting both its ma ma material and subjective dimensions. Abhinava Gupta characterizes this creative vibration as the essence of eye consciousness shining and vibrating as the object. Furthermore, with the philosophical framework of Prachyavichna, matter undergoes an evolutionary process driven by an uh, absolute consciousness or Shiva. They present a top-down model that begins with the most subjective state of absolute consciousness, evolving spontaneously through various categories or tattvas ultimately culminating in the most objective and solidified forms of matter. This progression, facilitated by Shakti and the closely associated concept of Spanda, plays a crucial role in the manifestation process. 
serving as the dynamic ground of creation. Prashevichna conceives of this process as a self-limitation or a rodana freely imposed by consciousness where the creative vibration or sanda gives rise to all existence. However, a central challenge arises regarding the nature of freedom with, within the Pachavitna um, framework, particularly concerning its adoption of Satkarya Vada, the causation theory of the Sankhya system. This theory, posting that the effect pre exists in its cause, potentially undermines the Pachavitna assertion of freedom within the manifested world. Such a deterministic relationship between causes and effects challenges the autonomy of finite expressions, raising doubts about their capacity for genuine agency and generation of novelty within the Pasadena framework. Drawing parallels from Western philosophy, we can compare this tension to Spinoza's dual aspect monism, where finite being, beings emanate from a singular free substance, so God, um, God or nature, with diminished autonomy. Similarly, the Pachavichna system risks collapsing into determinism if, fi if finite expressions are perceived as wholly determined by their causes, akin to Spinoza's system where thought and extension emanate from God slash nature. Spinoza's distinction between and natura naturans, so this means a nature naturing, or perhaps a better way to, to understand it is nature acting, and natura naturata, nature natured or nature acted upon, is helpful here, suggesting that only the one substance, God slash nature, is fully free, while everything generated from it is dependent and unfree. In parallel, Shiva is the only fully free agent whose essence is found out created freedom, while everything generated from Shiva is dependent on Shiva. This tension reflects a central problem with the Pachavichna tradition, reflecting a divergence between Abhinava and his predecessors, notably Uttaladeva. Addressing this inconsistency becomes imperative for Pachavichna as it pertains to the reconciliation of absolute freedom with the dependent nature of everything manifested in the material worlds and in the limited subjects. Thus, there are tensions stemming from characterizing matter as a creative expression of consciousness within the context of Satkaryavada. This has philosophical implications for the freedom and autonomy of finite expressions within the Pashyabhijna system, questioning whether the doctrine risks collapsing into determinism or a one-sided emanation theory. Indeed, <coughs> finite manifestations are perceived as mere extensions of the absolute, devoid of intrinsic autonomy. The Prashavichna system faces the challenge of reconciling this with the dynamic and creative nature of consciousness. The tension within the Prashavichna system is most visibly seen in, in the assertion that Shiva, as the absolute subject, remains unaffected and unaltered by his manifestation. This assertion aligns with the doctrine of Sakkaryavada, which poses that the effect, the effect pre exists in its cause, suggesting that Shiva's manifestation merely externalizes what is already contained within consciousness. However, if Shiva manifests the universe but remains unaffected by this process, it implies that Shiva does not learn anything new from the process of manifesting himself as the universe, and there is no self-discovery or genuine transform transformation on the part of Shiva or the Absolute. Moreover, adhering to the doctrine of Satkaryavada and the assertion of Shiva's unaffected nature amidst manifestation also threatens the autonomy of the universe, including um, human beings. If all effects ultimately stem from Shiva, then the universe has no ability to produce effects independently akin to Spinoza's deterministic system where God or nature, God slash nature or substance is active while its uh, modes are passive and utterly dependent on substance. Some scholars have pointed out this tension within the Prachavichna doctrine. For instance, Berger, Fritzmann and Barnes, 2018, argue that Prachavichna holds an inconsistent position. On the one hand, it regards Shiva as an impersonal mechanism and the universe, including person, as lacking agency, called this the um, impersonal component. On the other hand, it considers Shiva himself as a person, 
and individual beings is having sufficient agency to respond to Shiva, call this the personal component. While these scholars see this as an inherent inconsistency, inconsistency within the Pachavishna, it is vital to recognize that Pachavishna thinkers diverge on how they navigate these tensions and do not hold identical positions. As Mimek has shown, Uttpala, in contrast to his predecessor, um, Sumananda, who presents a strict pantheism where all beings and entities in the world are fully identified identical with Shiva or absolute consciousness and thereby advocates a philosophy of radical agency and immanence. Utpala, on the other hand, thoroughly down downplays the presence of the power of will in the activity of the universe. While Utpala repeatedly refers to Shiva's will as the cause of an apparently external creation, he essentially abstains from attributing such volition to the apparently limited agents in the world. For instance, in Ishvara Pachavichna Kavika 2.3.12, Utpala's um, states that individual entities that appear in the world perform their respective functions on the basis exclusively of the Lord's will and not of the volition that can be located in them. Clearly, Utpala um, Deva's formulation of the Pachavichna acknowledges a transcendent autonomous Shiva who possesses the power to manifest a universe of activity with little to no autonomy attributed to the finite manifestations of Shiva. While Utpaladeva unequivocally uh, seems to embrace the implication that absolute consciousness remains unaffected by its manifestation, Abhinavagupta's position is more complex. Some passages by Abhinava align with the notion of an unaffected consciousness, while others strongly contradict this view. Abhinava um, asserts that Shiva in manifesting himself as multiple objects and subjects is ever self-conscious of his manifestation, implying a dynamic engagement with um, his manifestations. Moreover, Abhinava moves closer to Somananda in some respects, emphasizing the autonomy of finite beings in the world. He highlights how the freedom of one singular consciousness to diversify into multiple subjects and objects does not diminish its capacity for free will. As uh, Birnaki notes, even the most diminutive creature, such as a worm, is attributed with will and desires, exhibiting a degree of freedom and capacity for subjectivity. This perspective emphasizes the relative autonomy of finite beings, aligning it with the libertarian understanding of freedom that circumvents issues of determinism. The tension between the absolute freedom uh, of consciousness and its purportedly unchanging na nature amidst manifestation poses significant uh, philosophical challenges. Reconciling this freedom with the idea of an unchanged consciousness is a central concern for Pachavichna and Abhinava, in particular, grapples with maintaining autonomy within finite manifestations while upholding the transcendence of Shiva. The tension within the Pachavidya system has profound implication for understanding the relationship between finite expressions and absolute consciousness. On the one hand, Shiva see, uh, is seen as unaffected by his manifestation, with the universe being merely an extension of Shiva's will, devoid of real autonomy. On the other hand, there is an emphasis on the autonomy of finite beings, suggesting a dynamic interaction where individual entities, including humans, possess, possess agency and can influence the absolute. This um, latter perspective challenges the notion of an imperson impersonal deterministic system. Instead, it proposes a more uh, reciprocal view of the absolute, where Shiva is responsive to the actions and experiences of individual beings. This approach upholds a relationship characterized by both interconnectedness and relative autonomy, circumventing strict determinism by allowing for a degree of freedom and subjectivity within finite beings. It portrays Shiva as not detached from his creation, but rather as responsive and engaged with it. Moreover, this view suggests that the absolute undergoes a process of self-discovery and enlightenment, rather than remaining a static entity that learns nothing from its manifestation. 
So to conclude, this paper has investigated the philosophical implication of Katavichna's doctrine of absolute freedom of consciousness, particularly focusing on the relationship between Shiva or the absolute and its finite manifestations in the world. Katavichna philosophers invoke the concept of spanda, representing the creative vibration of consciousness to bridge between the absolute and the relative, shedding light on the dynamic process through which Shiva manifests as a material world and as multiple conscious subjects. However, despite emphasizing the absolute freedom and dynamism of consciousness and as the fundamental doctrine of their system, ten attention persists, reconciling this doctrine with the assertion that Shiva manifests as, uni as universe without undergoing any essential change. Moreover, the doctrine of Spanda, which emphasizes that the dynamic process of manifestation appears to conflict with the doctrine of Sakaryavada, which posits that the effects pre-exist in its cause, implying a deterministic system. The firm perspective of these tensions emerge from the writing of Abhinava and Utkala, and Abhinava stresses Shiva's self-consciousness of his manifestations and attributes greater autonomy and freedom to finite beings than Utkala Deva. The doctrine of absolute freedom of consciousness, or Svatantriyavada, is pivotal in the Pratyavijna philosophy. It serves as a foundation, foundational concept for critiquing various um, philosophical systems, uh, various rival philosophical systems, and explaining phenomena such as imagination, perception, desire, intentionality, and the problem of other minds. By emphasizing volition and agency at the heart of the absolute, Katyabichna differentiates itself from other monist philosophies, presenting the universe and subjectivity as uh, genuine creations within consciousness rather than illusions. Their theistic pers perspective portrays Shiva as absolute subject or person rather than a substance, which addresses issues of determinism inherent in systems like Spinoza's substance monism, and offers a comprehensive framework for comprehending subjectivity and the genesis of the material world. However, the incorporation of the doctrine of the Sakkariyavadya and the assertion that Shiva is unaffected uh, by his manifestations introduces significant challenges to the doctrine of freedom. This doctrine implies that the manifestation process should rather be seen as an emanation, undermining the notion of the dynamism of consciousness and freedom within the manifested world. This tension has profound implications, question, questioning the capacity for self-transformation and liberation, the fundamental promise of Prajavijna. I believe that Abhinavutta acknowledges some of these tensions and proposes a more uh, reciprocal relationship between finite beings and Shiva, where finite beings possess a degree of agency and subjectivity, challenging the notion of a static and transcendent absolute. Further research co should continue to explore this tension with the Pratyabhijna, examining how Utpala and Abhinava addresses the relationship between absolute consciousness and finite expressions. Understanding this um, dynamic is crucial for revealing the broader implication for liberation, not just for the absolute, but also for human beings. In conclusion, the Pratyabhijna system, if these tensions can be resolved, offers a rich and complex frame framework for understanding the interaction between the finite and the infinite, allowing for group and genuine autonomy, autonomy within the universe and above, among human beings. It proposes that Shiva is not detached from his creation, but actively engaged in a dynamic process of self-discovery and enlightenment. Moreover, it suggests that we, as part of this process, can influence and participate in the absolutes unfolding. Uh, thank you very much. So we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes for discussions, and uh, I see the first question. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's partly clarifiedly in the sense that I'm not uh, sure if there is necessarily a tension in Sarkaria Varda. And uh, freedom for uh, I mean, finite selves. Is that a problem that the tradition or interlocutors of tradition themselves identified? Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder because Satkaryavada still allows for 
ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಟಿಟೀಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಸ್ಟೈಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಸ್ಟೈಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಂಗ್ So, so my main problem is that Sankhari Avada cannot, cannot allow for any kind of new novelty uh, if everything just pre-exists in its cause. And, and I think, I think Utpaladeva at least recognizes that and that's why he says that, you know, there's no volition in human beings, everything just is, is just an extension of Shiva's will. Um, Yeah, but, but, but I mean, I, I might be wrong <laughs> with the, that this is a pension. Um. Yeah, yeah, it was just on that. It struck me that it is a, it's a at one point you said it's a problem because the whole point is liberation. Mm. And so if agency and in individual human volition is necessary for liberation, then that would be attention. Yeah. But if, if, the, if the account of liberation within this system is more passivity or knowledge based, then that won't be attention for them. You can say it's a problem for me, but it won't be attention for them. Yeah, so that would be like the crucial crux of the point. Yeah, that, that that's true. That's a, that's a good point, actually. And and maybe, I mean, I know that they um, have this also this um, a doctrine of like Shiva the stone grace, and that's mm-hmm. actually how you're liberated. Okay. So maybe that is a more passive <laughs> like understanding of liberation. I just like... Um, Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's, um, there has to be this kind of like process of like self-discovery or like, you have, like I don't see the point that like um, in manifesting the universe, you don't learn anything new from it. So, or like, if there's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. ಶಿವ ಕೂಡ ಲರ್ನ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಯಾ ಗೆಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫ
um, that's fine because if you if you're doing something for the sake of learning or for the sake of self-discovery, we're no longer engaging in leisurely play. Mm -hmm. So the point of shiver is really not a brief, like to right, to right. force them. Like that's like what's the main they have no motivation to assume. It because yeah, if there were motivation, maybe something other than him that he would use or something. Right. Yeah. That, that would indicate on the street. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what my no, that's, that's a really good point. Playing around with something. Yeah, yeah. And I mean they do say that like you know, play, like it's Shiva's play, they, they keep emphasizing this point. Yeah, yeah. And that there is no, there's no reason more than like delighting in uh, Shiva's own playfulness or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that makes, it, it's a great point. I, I don't have a, any exact answer, but yeah, it's great, thanks. There's- We have a question in the chat. Yep. Um, okay, so no mute. We'll see this person. Hello, hello. I have muted this uh, Rajeshwari Ghosh. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. I enjoyed it. Um, my question is on the on self transformation and liberation. I am a practitioner and also a researcher of quantum paradigm, where um, spiritual intelligence and applied wisdom are the foundations of life, relationship building, employment, wealth creation, and education. So my question to you is, are you, or are you uh, engaged doing any research on application of these philosophies for personal growth and evolution of consciousness, which I am working on. Like, for example, you have mentioned questions, capacity for self-transformation and liberation. So from lower state of consciousness, which is affected or inflicted by a lot of lower vibratory energies like greed, jealousy, envy, anger, to a more expanded state of consciousness that is love, joy, fulfillment, satisfaction. So again, my question is, are you applying these philosophies for, for personal growth and involvement for, for any section of the society or are you doing any research well, I, I suppose i should <laughs> um okay. yeah i mean, I mean it, it it means this philosophy means a lot to me personally <laughs> for my own like self growth but i'm not i'm not um i'm i'm my my interest is pretty academic i guess i'm, I'm writing my phd on uh abhinava gupta <laughs> or my phd dissertation um so yeah, so 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 your question was if I was involved in any um in any kind of projects that kind of um light sorry, side of it. No, I need so, to turn her on her on her mute her again if she my uh, since I am on the practitioner side, I am I am trying to find out the wealth of uh, knowledge that academia has, um, whether we are doing something to uh, so that it is applied in our day-to-day -day life, so that yes. it increases the quality of our existence. We are focused mostly on the standard of living, the quantity of ex quantity of what we have on the material prospects. But are we doing anything to increase the quality of our life because there's so much going on on the mental health and emotional well-being and a lot of us are suffering from that so uh, well thank you very much for this is uh, for this question 
and regarding like as I sort of the, the practical applications I, I suppose like uh, my my whole point with this talk is that uh, there should really be some kind of self-discovery or self-transformation and that's what I'm trying to um that, that's why what what um why I'm trying to um kind of see if we can get that with Abhinav Gutta's philosophy rather than with Uttala Devas. Uh, because it doesn't seem to me that there is this kind of um, room for self-discovery or self-transformation on Paladeva's account. Okay, any more questions? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I kind of wonder, is there any uh, account in there of the individual falling away from to the floor? Because that's one other way to solve that problem, is to say, actually, so uh, total freedom is uh, union with the determinism of, of the flow of Shiva here. And the freedom is negative, is to actually contract and be free to be the Yeah. I'm, well, I'm not sure I'm satisfied with that kind of freedom. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, is, it, is, that, is there a notion of a further contraction? Is it the creation of our shed between the revolution? And yeah. Is there a notion of a further contraction within the individual? Um, is there a notion of a further, like a further contraction within the individual? I'm not sure. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps there is. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand exactly what you mean, but <laughs> no, it's fine. To do, I, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, if matter is a contraction, yeah. Of uh, pure consciousness, yeah, could in the same way the individual contract and fall oh, yes. and what would fit be there. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's um, that's how individuality is really explained in the system as a contraction of absolute consciousness, which kind of um, there's also this kind of like the absolute freedom of consciousness is contracted to this kind of limited freedom of will in the individual. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I think, I think what's interesting is possibility of this kind of down over the life force and, and the degree of contraction within the given life force, and not just as a category of individual, mm -hmm. Psych psychologically. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Good point. <laughs> yeah.